Welcome to the fourth Mass Monday! Yes! All right, if you are new to my channel, I'm Kate. I'm a third grade teacher. I've been teaching for 14 years and <laughs> I make teaching videos. So sometimes I make art videos and and travel videos and things like that, but mostly I make teaching videos. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below uh, or at the side or wherever it is. And don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss any future episodes. And if you're returning, welcome back to my channel. I'm always happy to see you. And so today for Math Monday, we're going to be looking at how to multiply two digit numbers by two digit numbers. And when I was growing up, we learned a very traditional way to multiply two digit by two digit or any digit by any digit. But a lot of students, they it's too confusing. They don't know what numbers multiply. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, the way that we learned in school is we would write our numbers vertically aligned and then we would multiply. So we would multiply in this example, the two times four, which is eight, and then the two times one, which is two, and then we would go to the next line and write the zero as our place marker, and then we'd multiply one times four, which is four, and then one times one, which is one, and then we would add them together and we would get 168. But this is kind of a confusing way students want to multiply sideways a lot of times. So as a teacher, I was really trying to come up with other ideas on how to teach this. So this is what we're going to learn today. Are you ready? So we're going to take the same number, 14 times 12. We already know the answer is 168 because we were just watching the video. However, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the two numbers on the left. So that's the one and the one. And we're going to write the number one on the left hand side. Then what we're going to do is multiply the two numbers on the right. So we're going to multiply four times two, which is eight. And we're going to put that on the right hand side. So I want you to remember that if you multiply the numbers on the left, their answers go on the left and the numbers that you multiply on the right will go on the right. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Now to figure out the middle number, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the combinations we haven't done. Now you might be thinking to yourself, huh, I'm confused now. Just stay with me. It's okay. So what you're going to do is the two numbers in the middle. So think of it almost like an Oreo cookie. <laughs> The middle part we've not multiplied yet, so that's the 4 and the 1. So you see I put a box around that 4 and 1. So we're going to multiply 4 times 1, and we're going to write down the 4. But we actually have another combination to multiply, and that's going to be the 1 and the 2, so the outside, the, 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 um, the cookie part of the Oreo. We need to multiply that. So 1 times 2 is 2. When we add those together, we will get 6. Now, if I'm looking at this problem, every number in each position, the number in the ones position, the number in the tens position, and the number in the hundreds position, they're all single digits. I don't have to worry about carrying yet. So our final answer is going to be 168. So that was easy, right? Now you might be thinking, Kate, come on. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure about this. Don't worry. We're going to keep practicing. So. The next number that we're going to try is 13 times 23. Do you know the answer yet? Don't worry if you don't. So here we go. We will multiply the 1 and the 2. These are the numbers on the left. So our answer for 1 times 2 is going to be written on the, on the left-hand side of our paper. So we will go ahead and write down the 2. The next thing we need to do is multiply the two numbers that we find on the right. That's the 3 and the 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. That's right. So over on the right-hand side, we're going to put the 9. Now, if I'm looking at this, all of the numbers showing so far are single digits. So I'm really not going to have to worry about any carrying. Unless when I get to the middle, 
um, the number is higher than 10, then I am going to have to carry. But let's, let's keep just seeing how it goes, shall we? Okay. So I have to multiply. <laughs> you can think of it almost like the inside of a cookie if you want. I'm not really sure how you want to think about it, but it's the middle two numbers. So you're going to multiply that 3 and 2, and you're going to get 6. That's right. Now you have to multiply the outside two numbers, so the 1 times 3, and that answer is 3. So when you add 6 and 3, you get 9. That's right. So 2 gets rewritten, the 9 is already written, and our other 9 gets written. So the total answer is 299. Fantastic. You just solved a double digit by double digit number. How cool is that? If you remember which numbers to multiply, then this should be no problem at all. Let's take a look at another one. So we're going to do 51 times 12. I'm just going to tell you that there's probably going to be some carrying. So now is when you're really, really going to have to pay attention to how the numbers work together. All right? So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and multiply my two numbers that are on the left, and that is the 5 and the 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. I'll write that on the left-hand side of my paper. Then I'm going to multiply the 1 times 2. Those are both on the right-hand side of the problem, so I'm going to write the answer on the right-hand side of my paper. So that's 2. Simple enough. Now we're going to come to the middle where it could get tricky. So we'll do 1 times 1, and that gives us 1, and 5 times 2 gives us, that's right, 10. So when I add 10 and 1, I'm going to get 11. Now 11 is going to be a problem because you have two digits in one place value and you can't do that. So we actually have to carry the 1, just like you would with regular addition. We're going to add that 1 to the 5. So 5 plus 1 gives us 6. That's right. So we're going to put the 6 down on the left-hand side of our paper. The number that we have not used, we just rewrite. So that's the 1 and the 2. The answer is 612. All right, I feel like you're starting to get a sense of this. So now we're going to continue a couple more to practice. At any time that you want to stop and try it on your own, I encourage you to do so. All right, if you're not quite ready, then you can just go ahead and continue listening to me talk you through it. So here we go. We're going to multiply 13 times 18. Now you might be thinking, oh, these are low numbers. This is going to be easy. But you do have to keep in mind that there's a potential for carrying. So we don't know the answer yet, but let's figure it out. The first thing we're going to multiply is the two numbers that are on the left. That's the 1 and the 1. We'll write the answer on the left-hand side, which is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. That was an easy one. All right, but now we have to look at the two numbers on the right. That's 3 and 8. So we have to now multiply 3 times 8, which is 24. If you said 24, you got that right. Now, I circled the 2 for a reason because we have two numbers in one place value, and that is a problem. So we're actually going to have to carry that 2. Now, I'm not going to add that 2 to the middle number until I know what the middle number is. And there's a reason that I do that. And, it, and you'll start to see why, but I would suggest doing the carries after you have all three place values figured out. All right? So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the middle numbers. So we need to multiply 3 times 1, which happens to be, yes, that was easy, it's 3. And we have to do the outside numbers, which is 1 times 8. So 1 times 8 is 11. Now, I want you to take a look at this because we have another problem, and I circled it, and that other problem is that 1. So we essentially are going to have to carry twice. Yeah. That does happen sometimes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start over on the right-hand side with that 2. We're going to take that 2 and we're going to add it to the 11, all right? So we're going to take the 2 and we're going to add it to the 11. We're going to leave that 4. That 4 doesn't change at all. That's just going to stay as is. So 11 plus 2 is 13. So I'm going to rewrite the number as 13, and I'm going to get rid of that 11. 
So the new number in the middle is 13, but we have a bit of a problem because now we still have two digits in the middle place, but we already knew that, didn't we? So I'm actually going to have to take the one and that's the one that's going to carry. So I'm going to be adding it to the next place value over. So one plus one is two. That's right. That was pretty easy. You knew that. And then I just have to write some numbers I haven't used yet. That happens to be the three and the four. So your total answer for 13 times 18 is 234. Okay. So that one was a bit trickier. I agree. But if you just remember to do all your pieces first and then do your carries after, should be no problem. And the great thing about it is the numbers are tend to be a bit smaller, so you don't have to carry big numbers, right? You're just maybe adding two or you're adding one. So it's not so difficult when you really think about it. You ready? Are you ready to try one on your own yet? If not, it's totally fine. You can keep practicing them with me. I know that when we're learning a new skill, it we have to practice that. So it can be hard. So here we go. We're going to do 72 times 53. Okay, you probably already know there's going to be carries, and there will. So keep that in mind. The first thing we do, as always, is we're going to multiply that 7 and the 5. Now, something interesting happens. For your numbers that go on the left, if it is a double digit, you get to write it as two place values. It's the only one that you get to do that with. The only one. All the others will end up having carries. But that's just how this trick works. So 7 times 5 is 35. So I'm going to write down 35. Now I'm going to put two lines underneath. One under the 3 and one under the 5 to show that it is two separate place values. Now we're going to multiply our numbers on the right. That's 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put down my 6. And if I'm looking at the number 6, it's a single digit. So I know that I'm not going to have to worry about a carry. The only place I might have to carry is in the middle. Let's look and see if that happens. All right, here we go. So for the middle, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply um, the 2 times the 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So yes, there's going to be a carry, but I'm not done. I now I'm going to multiply 7 times 3, and that's going to give me 21. When I add those up together, I get 31. That's right. So looking at it, we know that the 3 is the bigger of the number. It's 30 versus 1, so that 3 is going to have to carry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add 3 to 35. Got it? So 35 plus 3 is, did you say it? If you know 5 plus 3, you know 35 plus 3, and it is 38. Good job. So we're going to write 38 down. The only numbers I haven't used or that are remaining are the 1 and the 6. So I'm just going to write the 1 down. And then I'm going to take the 6 and I'm going to write it down. My final answer is 3,816. Did you get it right? I hope so. I hope you're starting to see how this works. I think one of the best things that you can do is just practice, right? Practice these and come back to this video as often as you need if you need that refresher, if you forget what multiplies together. But once you have it, it makes your life a lot simpler. We're going to go ahead and do another one. All right, we're going to do 63 times 41. Do you know the answer yet? If you want to try it on your own, now is the time to pause the video. If you're not ready yet, it's okay. We'll do it together. So we're first going to multiply our numbers on the left. That's 6 and 4. Remember that only on the left-hand side, if it's larger than a single digit, if it's double digit, you get to write it as two place values. It's the only one. All the others get written as a single place value. Keep that in mind. So 24 is a double digit, so we're going to write 24 and put two separate lines underneath to show that it is worth two place values. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at 3 times 1. We have to do the right-hand side. So 3 times 1 is 
three, simple. We've done that one before, okay, so we know that one. And if I'm looking at that, it's a single digit. So I know nothing will carry over from the ones into the tens. So I probably should realize that three will be the last digit in this answer, okay? So now we have to do the middle. So you'll, okay, so now you see I'm going, I'm gonna take a little shortcut. I'm just gonna go ahead and write the three under because I already know that's the last digit. Do you see how that works? Only if it's already a single digit. Now I have to multiply the middle numbers. So we're gonna do three times four, which is 12, and then I have to do six times one. Those are the numbers that had not been multiplied yet. So 12 plus six is 18. And we have two numbers in one place value. So we are gonna have to carry that one. That is gonna happen. So we're gonna carry the one over and we're gonna add it to 24. So we get 24 plus one is, that's right, if you said 25, you are correct. So we'll put down our 25. We haven't used the eight yet, so we need to now write our eight down, and then we already wrote the three down. So our total answer is 2,583. Did you get it right? It's really fun to do these. I enjoy them very, very much. I hope that you'll continue to practice these. I hope that it is something that will make a lot more sense and take some of that some of the nervousness about double digit multiplication away for you. It's really not that hard and when you break it into these partial products and make it into smaller bits, it makes it a lot more manageable. All right, you guys. So that was Math Monday for today. I hope that you learned a new skill. I hope that this is something that will help you in your math career and next week we have a new Math Monday. So some exciting things happening here at Classroomology or the Sleepy Teacher or whatever you want to call it. So we are going to be um, continuing on with the ABC theme and I have three new ABC videos that are going to be coming out but they are secretive right now because I didn't see anybody else doing it, so I'm going to do it before they're taken. And um, what else is going on? I have an Africa vlog that I need to uh, edit and get up, so if you're interested just to kind of see what Africa looks like and travel and all of that amazing stuff, then definitely stop by for that. I don't know when that will be coming out. And as always, if you are not following me on my socials, Follow me on my socials, especially my Instagram. I still need to do my five facts about me. I'll get around to it. Um, I've been tagged by two people. So anyway, I'm really happy where this channel is going. The best thing that you can do to help me out is to share this video. Share this video and help my watch time. I um, have also another video coming out uh, that I'm going to upload on the 20th around there. So be looking for that because I have um, a lot of gratitude to give. And I think that's it for me for today. And I just really hope that you learned a lot. I know some of these Math Mondays are getting a bit long. So if you made it to the end, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate that. And um, I look forward to the next one and hopefully it'll be a little bit shorter for you. All right, you guys, from the bottom of my heart to yours, Here's my last video. Bye. In our Kesbot crossover, we're like math magicians here. So what are we gonna do when the numbers start getting a little higher?